What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Toronzo Show. I am excited for another episode. It's been a fucking rough day and week, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I literally woke up this morning to um, a paycheck. Got paid finally for my new job. Um, believe it or not, nobody would fucking cash it. Went from Ace Cashing to Walmart to fucking, um, I don't know, the little corner stores right here. Whatever the fuck pulled up on Google. Them cocksucker sons of bitches would not cash my motherfucking check and just when i figured out something my friend called me and was like hey you know i know you're trying to cash a check look on the check and see who what bank you know issued it um uh, mind you my job gave it to me he said look up what bank issued it It was wells fargo call wells fargo he was like you know um we can cash it for you here nigga that's where the fucking check came from i didn't know that it works they wouldn't think you gotta take it to some place i don't have a wells fargo account though that they made the check they can cash it great Something that I know now going forward, if anybody else needs or have issues like that, that's what you got to do. I get into my car. I'm calling Wells Fargo. We on the phone. As this motherfucker hangs up, bitch, the motherfucking car gives out gas right in the parking lot of where I live. I ain't made it nowhere. Um, look up on Google. It's a mile away. It's 94 motherfucking degrees, bitch. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. It's hot as the fuck. I had to walk to Wells Fargo. Took a shower before I left great but i ain't nared this ass up and god knows how long it's been at least two mm, probably about a month probably about a month um and so yeah it's not hard to give or it's not yeah it's not hard to give swamp ass out here in these streets so when i was walking you know to where i was going i realized damn i did not put deodorant on so i'm walking and walking and walking sweating and sweating and sweating had the motherfucking took a little a little whiff i said "Ooh, that's me it was all me, and I don't even get down like that. The biggest compliment I get as anybody that you know um, is that I smell a fucking amazing. But I can't defeat the Atlanta Heat, and I didn't know that. It, um, I underestimated the fuck out of it, and it got the best of me. It got, it beat me down in my goddamn drawers. So I get to the bank. They cash the check. Great. Uh, get back to the car. Get. I had to buy a gas can. Then got some gas. Mind you, bitch, I don't drive a motherfucking a little car. I put five dollars in that hoe. She ain't budge. Motherfucker ain't even turn. Put ten dollars in there. We had a little action. She crunk up. Great. After I wasted gas all over myself, my hand, my shoes, my legs, my feet. Um and then mind you, I had the dog with me on the side. I'm stepping on the leash gas all over it was horrible the day the gas didn't get on the dog if peter's concerned but it was just a complete shit show and um yeah i'm sorry that i had to go through it guys but anywho um that happened so i was like okay you know what fuck it got the check cash got some gas in the car might go buy me some motherfucking weed bitch i goes to buy some weed on the way to the weed man why the goddamn police pulled me over for my tags i said okay that's how we're doing it today cool with me i've been through worse and he knows that too that's why i'm like you got a plan you got to have a plan and so yeah it's been a rough day i literally been so much rough of a week that's why the podcast is late it's supposed to come out every tuesday but today is well i'm not going to tell y'all but um yeah the podcast is late and what's crazy i've been so like you know like so consistent and you know trying to keep it going and you know keep hope alive and you know been going viral recently so it's been kind of working out but goddamn i still kind of had that feeling where it's just like you know what fuck it. i really just don't want to do it and i didn't feel like doing an episode at all i didn't feel like recording i had wrote it out but i just couldn't bring myself to do it i even came to you know the place where i record like two or three times i just could not bring myself to cut the camera on and just start doing it and i felt kind of like losing myself in a way and i was just like damn i gotta get my mojo back somehow and i really didn't find it i didn't find it i just had to kind of like push myself just like a few minutes ago i was just you know listening to you know my Nicki minaj and my songs that kind of get me amped up nothing was really working but i was just like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna turn the camera on and start recording uh so yeah yeah I don't know. I'm trying to phrase it in a way to where it doesn't sound kind of crazy, but I don't know. I just was about to give up. 
no rhyme or reason. I just kind of felt like shit for a few days. But you still kind of got to push through. So that's kind of where I'm getting at with that, y'all. But it felt good, too, you know, here recently. Because the other day when I was on the way to work, this guy who actually lived next to my job, to which I actually met where I live, um, a little while, like when I had first moved to Atlanta, and I kind of didn't like recognize him all the way at first, and I was kind of like looking at him like, you look kind of familiar, but I can't really tell but before I could say anything, he was like, yo, he was like, um, yo, me and my homie, we watching your podcast, like, you know, we still follow you, um, and I was like, yo, like, wow, okay, that's cool, like, people, you know, actually are tuned in, and the kind of guys that they are, I wouldn't expect them to, you know, maybe like glimpse, you know, follow me on Instagram, watch the clips, but not actually watch my actual podcast, so that was just a great and cool feeling to me, and then on top of that, the girl up here on the rooftop, I came up here the other night, I was walking a dog, right? And I was um, coming down, and I kind of peeked into the rooftop. The girl that I know, she was with a group of people. The girl that I know, she had waved at me. And um, her friend had got up and trying to figure out, you know, who the hell he's waving at. So she had, like, ran out, and she looked down, and she was like, it's the podcast boy. And then her friend was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, that's my home. You know, they came out and, like, spoke to the dog and stuff because they remember that I had a dog. But I was just like, wow. Like, okay, they actually are remembering, you know or knowing you know like who i am and it's just it's just a cool feeling it's such a cool feeling um and it's just been you know more like little times of people that i've you know met through atlanta and where it's like wow they actually are watching my fucking show and it's cool but like i said you still can't help those days where it's just like damn you don't really want to do shit let me make sure i'm still recording because my camera been kind of tripping y'all this host stopped on seven minutes earlier like who the fuck does that hello but um yeah outside of that it's been going pretty good i can't complain my new job been giving me hella fucking hours so shout out to the money that's being made definitely needed i was about to move back to um virginia ain't gonna lie but something was like nah fuck it you got it just go ahead and tough it out i'm gonna stay where i'm at i like my apartment building a lot i'm not gonna lie and everything is right here and no matter where you go i'm gonna end up paying the same goddamn thing everywhere is expensive right now i don't know if you guys have recognized that every fucking thing is expensive right now and everywhere i've looked around i was about to move to houston i was about to move uh, like i said back to virginia i looked at memphis um i looked at where else did i look la and you're gonna pay this if not more no matter where you go so Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, I do want to talk about friend groups a little bit. Basically, knowing when and where to mix, like, different friends. Like, you know. Then let me put the blunt out because they'll be trying to ban me on TikTok. But, you know, basically trying to mix. Knowing when and where to mix, like, different friends. Because everybody doesn't kind of get along with everybody. Like, you want to have one friend who is kind of have like a low tolerance for a super low tolerance for bullshit they not really like the jokey type they more kind of on like the serious level down to earth um spiritually ish kind of people to where they don't really bang but you know like a lot of different energies but yet you take them out with the friend who only listens to sexy ray shaking ass the entire time yelling obnoxious asking a thousand fucking questions take a shot every 10 minutes the girl already told you she don't smoke you keep trying to offer her the goddamn blunt and you put them two people in the same room and you try to figure out why the fuck they get to argue and why they don't like each other and when you say you were this friend for some reason something came up they don't want to come out no more it's because you got to know where to place your friends um with other friends everybody does not mix because you like this person um, a lot and you like this other person a lot does not mean that they're gonna like each other a lot it just does not work that way um unfortunately but if it did you know that would be amazing so you kind of just have to be conscious of that don't overdo it and i get it you know i'm the kind of person where i like to have all my people together i want my friends to hang out with my other friends because i love both of them and sometimes you know it does work and i can tell that they kind of you know do it out of faith in me but they if you know they met each other like in a bar or something the bitches would probably ha crack each other across the head with the goddamn bottle or they would never go to each other and start talking to have a conversation because they just not each other's cup of tea which is okay they're my cup of tea you know you're you being the mutual friend so you just got to kind of you know recognize that and it does feel awkward sometimes you know hanging out uh you know with your friends separately 
when you really want, want to hang out with them together or if, if there's like a one-off thing say for example there's a taco festival this weekend and it's only this weekend it's never happening again you want both of your friends to go but you know they don't really bang with each other like that y'all not like a because there's best friend groups don't get me wrong there are best friend groups where everybody loves each other equally we all fuck with each other real hard that is different i'm speaking more so you know you and then you having best friends because everybody you know doesn't all come together so at times at times but luckily for me you know all of my the people i consider you know that close in that capacity they love each other so and they respect each other out of me and all i can do is appreciate it honestly uh so yeah that's what i wanted to say about friends guys um oh yeah so another thing that i do want to cover is dating older guys versus new guys i was telling my friend i was like uh i feel like you know dating older guys is a little bit different because (laughs) because when you date an older nigga like you don't have to give them no pussy off rip and i'm speaking mainly from heterosexual relationships you don't have to give them no pussy off rip you fuck around put on that um wife beater Throw some water on that motherfucker. Had him nipples showing. Twerk like you sexy red. He like make the 50 nigga, 50 year old nigga feel like he motherfucking 35. With that ass moving. You put his hand on it. Motherfucker is going to go crazy. He's going to buy you breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And take you out every goddamn day. You see him a picture of that pussy. It's really going down baby. I'm telling you. He is going to have you a cure forte. Out front tomorrow. 2018. You heard it here first, but them younger niggas, they want pussy up front. You won't pull us. You, <laughs> you will not pull the wool over their eyes. No, granted, there are a lot of you know, I would say good young niggas who you know you get them some pussy or whatever, and they do what the fuck they're supposed to do. You know, they treat you right. Do the whole Valentine's Day thing, put the rose petals in all over the bed, and you know the candles, and have a real nice you know romantic shit. Take it to the sex store. Might even let you play in his butt a little bit if y'all up to it. You go to the right sex store and see what y'all into they those guys do exist um now i think a lot of people you know kind of get stuck on like the man whores we're not really talking about those those motherfuckers gonna fuck whatever they gonna fuck a hole is a hole of them and there is nothing we can really do about that but as far as me which side i would pick i'm probably gonna go with the younger niggas first because i look well i guess because i'm a younger nigga too i want to fuck up front you know what i mean get it out the way see if we into it or if we're not into it and then after that, we can kind of, you know, like build a little bond because I'd have been on the side of the fence, too, where it's like, goddamn, we'd have built the bond first. But the sex is fucking trash, you know? Yeah. And that does happen, too. And it's like, goddamn, I hate to let you go, baby, but um, I need to get my rocks off. And this ain't happening. You don't suck it right. You ain't verbal enough. You don't talk. You don't whisper in my ear. You don't, um, I don't know, wear the right underwear suck enough dick do something crazy jump off the um <laughs> never mind <laughs> oh goodness gracious i already said jump off the goddamn balcony and let me jump over and then just kind of land in it like that like do some shit to wow me type shit that's what the word was saying type shit oh lord my hoo is hanging out y'all I ain't got no panties on. I ain't got no panties on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or am I surprised? Um, okay, so another thing that I would like to cover. I want to light this blunt for a second. Give me one minute. Let me make sure I'm still recording, y'all. Because I ain't got time to play with this phone today. I really don't. Upon our blood clot. You're from a chat bot. You see me, no? Yeah, right, this is the wickedest introduction in the world. Me and my legacy from Otto Donovan Thomas and Numcho. Dig a fresh one, go and pick up yourself. Grace, Maria, Gucci. Wait, tell him. When I'm not freaking out of place, man, they are all freak by the tons of back, man. Blood clot. That's my Jamaican accent, y'all. It's getting better. And they put it on Duolingo. If you want to learn Patois, it's on Duolingo. And uh, I'm living. I'm living. I am living for it. <clears throat> I got my leg crossed over. I'm in my fam era today, y'all. Just me being a girl. You see my hair all pinked up and stuff. <laughs> look, no, I'm playing, but look, whole time, 
I don't know if y'all remember the Facebook video when I had first started growing my hair. I did like a Facebook live, and the video is still up on my Facebook. Um, this dude in the comments was like, "Are you transitioning?" And I'm like, "Bitch, transitioning into fucking what? What are you talking about?" But I think he thought it was the other way around. I think he thinks that I was like a woman becoming a man. So had that going for me. It's rough out here, yo. I'm trying to um Damn, I forgot the microphone down here. I'm trying to see what else I wanna talk about. But this is kinda like a lax episode. I'm sorry I don't have as much energy as I usually do. But like I said, I have sort of rough day. Alright, I guess we'll cover pet owners real quick. I don't know if anybody else is stressed the fuck out. As far as me as having a goddamn dog, which I have a dog. Cat owners, I mean, it's rough for every goddamn body. But dog owners specifically, you take the motherfuckers outside. They don't want to use the bathroom. They got to piss on every goddamn thing that they see. Every tree, every post, every motherfucking fire extinguisher. Every dog that walks by, they got to bark at that. Every human that walks by, they got to sniff at that. You take the motherfuckers back in the house they don't want to eat the food when you put it out when you fuck the shoe eat it ain't eating two three days you're like what the fuck is wrong with the dog then you give them a lot of food and the motherfuckers won't take a shit for two three days and it's like what the hell you obviously have to shit um you haven't ate nothing and you know you've been eating and eating, eating and eating for two three four days and you have not took a shit you go to the vet them motherfuckers want 35 dollars off rip before they you can even tell that my dog is dying they don't give a fuck 45 dollars just to walk in then we're gonna charge you God knows however many hundreds of dollars just to tell you, um, put some ice on that thing. He's going to be okay. Lil Rocky's a fighter. That's how they do it. It's, a shit show. it's literally a disgusting thing that happens to us. Um, pet owners. And, you know, they hate the bath. They um, bark at all the wrong times, especially the dogs. Whenever the doorbell rings. <laughs> That one cute guy, the ugly niggas come over, your best friends come over, cool. But the one cute guy that you like, he act like that that motherfucker got a, a fucking, it's pistol whipping you in front of him. They, whoop, whoop, whoop. my dog is fucking psychotic, but it's not just me. I've seen it happen with other people. I've also seen cats that ain't house trained. The motherfucker shit in the goddamn windowsill. They shit on the floor, just like dogs. Um, Use the bathroom around the house. It's like, why won't you use the fucking litter box? But you got lazy cat owners who don't take a litter box out. So the cat ain't going to do it. So they're going to do wherever they see fit. They climbing all over the counter. You got cat hair all in your goddamn food. You got it all over your clothes. And you got people to come to work. They want to hug and get that shit all over you. It's coming off of their hair. You get in their car. It's dog hair everywhere. I mean, it's just disgusting. Being a pet owner is no fucking joke. The motherfuckers are expensive. The price of dog food is going up. But I stopped buying it. Surprise. I cook for my dog now, literally, every single day, if not every single day, every other day. What I do is um, make him some rice, so that's like the base of it. He got him some rice, and I'll either boil him some chicken, shred that motherfucker up. Um, I got a George Foreman. I'll grill him some um, fish, shred that up, no seasons, none, just slap it on that motherfucker and let it cook. Um, and yeah, that's how we kind of get it popping. I'll give him a little bit of table food here and there, but yeah. It's rough. It's just rough having a dog or having a pet in general. Because I know cat owners, y'all got it fucked up too. Them motherfuckers are vicious and they're unprovoked. My nerves are too bad to have a cat. You can literally be sitting here chilling, smoking your blunt, living your life. You know, it could be a great day. You daydreaming um, about how you got your ass ate last night. And he was just telling you how beautiful you are and how fat your ass is. And this thing, you know, the cat just just jump right here. You, what the fuck you down they're fucking stupid i don't like them i don't like them kittens are cute and cool i love kittens but yeah cats just stress me the fuck out and they attack real bad i remember my roommate that cat used to whoop her motherfucking ass i would hear her at three four o'clock in the morning she in there quit it get down stop quit scratching me quit it get it i'm just like girl if you don't toss that motherfucker Look, Peter, I forgot about the people that's going to call the people on me for saying mean things about animals, but I would never toss a cat. But goddamn, cat, come on now. Do better than that. Don't hurt my friend. She come out the next morning. She scratched all the fuck up looking crazy. And then you got to feed this motherfucker that then whooped your ass all night long and go buy some more food and snacks and treats and toys for him after he done beat you the fuck up since you done had him. 
It does not make any sense to me, and it's unfortunate. But yeah, you got to be a strong mofo to have some cats. And the bitches that had three, four, five cats, you have no morals. And that's all <laughs> I can say. That's all I can say about this. Oh, goodness. I got to keep making sure we're recording, y'all, because I ain't got no spectator here today. I usually got a live audience, but I'm a solo girl today. Um, Okay, so I guess we can talk about this briefly. So I guess I'll share a little bit about where I am with love. Honestly, I really don't feel nothing for anybody that I really meet. Like, there's a lot of people that I might find, like, attractive or, you know, catch, like, a good vibe, have a great conversation. Or, you know, in the moment, it may, like, feel kind of cool. But it's, like, kind of like once they leave, I don't really feel anything for them. I feel the need to, like, call a text or, like, a connection or anything. I don't really know if that's because I'm, like, detached or, like, so aloof. And they try to, you know, Aquarius shit. But, um... Even, like, back then, there would be some people like, okay, I like this person enough to where I kind of, like, want to, like, pursue them. But I don't really feel that about anybody these days. Even if we, like, you know, like, fuck or mess around or even, you know, hang out a couple of times, it's hard for me to kind of, like, catch a feel for somebody. Nothing, I guess, feels real anymore or, like, genuine. So, I'm not going to say I, like, kind of gave up on love, but it's, like, I don't know how to look for it anymore. And it's kind of mind-boggling in a way. And it's weird. I don't know if anybody else feels the same. But it's like I just can't catch a connection. Yeah. And that's where I am with that. And I still, like I said, find people cute, you know, still, you know, like want to link people, you know, get to know people. But I don't feel like, for one, nobody has been that interesting, I guess, enough to where I wanted to pursue them. Or either they were, but circumstances were kind of weird. I don't really know. It's hard to say. It's very hard to say. Um, what else I want to talk about? Let me start checking these things off, y'all, so I don't talk about them twice. Friend groups. I was going to make a big deal about this one story time, but I really don't feel the need to. Okay, fuck it. I will anyway. All right, so basically, I tried to set up my first threesome, and it literally failed and went to complete shit. Um, so basically, there was this guy who, you know, we've been kind of messing around for a while, um, and we're kind of, you know, we mess around as, like, friends. So, like, we mess around, but it's not like, you know, lovey-dovey type shit. We don't kiss. We don't, like, you know, we ain't on that gay shit for real. We just kind of get with it a little bit, if that makes sense. So... He's the kind of guy where it's like, you know what? I don't know. I want to try something new. And he seemed like that he would be open enough to do it. So I was like, you know what? I want to try and have a threesome. Cool. Not even a full threesome, right? What it was actually going to be was him giving, was this one guy giving us two head at the same time. We didn't want to fuck um, because we're sides. Hello. So, yeah, that's what it was going to be. And so, cool. He was like, well, you find the guy, you know, show me a picture or whatever. I found the guy, I show him a picture of him, I show him a picture of him, I'm like, okay, cool, um, so mind you, the guy that I already know, um, he was a little bit late coming over, so the other guy had got there first, so as the other guy's coming in, he lets him in, the other guy lets the guy I already knew in, but he kind of like had his head down, um, he had like the hoodie on, so it was giving mysterious girl, but in a way to where it was like, I can't really, you know, all the way to who that is. But if I know him, then I would know who that is. But anyway, we get upstairs. We in there. We chilling, talking. I look over as I'm about to, because I'm like, you know, starting to roll the blunt. I fucking turn around. I look over. They like hugging each other. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Maybe they're getting started. I don't know how this is going down. I didn't expect it to be like super gay um, like this on some like huggy duggy type shit. But I guess, you know, if that's what they're into, cool. So, um, so then, uh, look, okay, so then the guy that I already knew comes over, sits on the bed beside me, and he kind of like leaned in. And he's like, I think I'm gonna let y'all do y'all. I was like, huh? He was like, yeah. He's like, me and bro know each other. He's like, that shit gonna be awkward. I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all do y'all. I was like, yeah, I know, bro. I was like, oh, shit. So, 
He leaves. They hug each other. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, tap in, so on, so But mind you, he said it in a way. When he said I'm thinking, like, okay, this nigga ready to wait in the living room and let us do what we got to do. Then he's going to, like, come back inside. Because he said, he's like, no, he's this how he said it. He's like, I'm going to step out for a second and let y'all do y'all. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to wait in the living room, let us do us, and then come back. I don't know what it was given. I was horny, ridden to give a fuck, and I was drunk enough. And that's just what it was. So he was like, oh, he left. So then the other guy um, looked at me, and I was like, oh, y'all know each other? He was like, I mean, we went to school together, but he was like, that was like 10 years ago. He was like, I don't know why he think that it would have been weird or like awkward or, um, or anything. Like, we never messed around. He was like, what the fuck? So X is him out of the equation. So now we got a point where it was like, okay, I didn't call the nigga over. But now I'm kind of like nervous because, mind you, I'm kind of like into like voyeurist shit a little bit. Like, I like to kind of like watch. I've never really been in a situation where I could watch. But I'm kind of like into like watching on the low. If I could watch somebody have sex, I would. Which I guess is kind of like similar to like porn. You know what I mean? Well, I watch a lot of porn, so I guess that's why. But I don't know. I wanted to see like a live action. Have them start it off. Get my rocks off. Horny. Cool. And then he started doing me. And now we got a thing going. The train is rolling. Everybody's on track. Right? That's what I was hoping for. But it did not work out. I could not get hard. And he was just sucking away and away and away. I'm talking about gummy worm girl. He's trying to like make sounds like as if he's like deep throat. I'm like deep throating what? It's literally as soft as can be. <laughs> it was horrible. But it was my reality. And um, yeah. So okay. Shit got kind of crazy. I pulled out my phone. I started like watching porn. And I was like okay. Okay. Start watching porn, kind of got going a little bit, literally right when I started like watching porn, maybe like 30 seconds later, ooh, I came, and I had only been hard for what, all of like 15 seconds, and he'd been sucking the soft dick for all of what, fucking 20, so it was super unfortunate, and I knew he was pissed off, um, I was supposed to call him, I go over to redeem myself, but it never happened, tomato, tapato, potato, but that's my real life story, guys. Um, things happen. So, yeah, no threesome for me. No threesome for me. I guess I'm going to head on into the segments, y'all. Also, I was thinking earlier, too, something I've been wanting to say um, about consistency. I really think that consistency is mainly only hard when you're not getting paid for it because I realize. When I was getting paid for it, like doing sales jobs on commission and shit like that, I was the fucking best. I was killing it. I was making, oh my God, I was selling my motherfucking ass off. And I was consistent at doing a week in and week out at the top of the board because I was getting paid for it. I was getting rewarded for it. But it's kind of harder to, you know, consistent, to be consistent when, you know, you go into the gym and, you know, you are trying to do, you know, content creation and stuff like that. And you're trying to fast and you're trying to, um, you know, men being consistent with men in relationships and stuff like that. It's hard to be consistent because you're not getting paid for it. That's not like an actual reward for it, like a physical reward. It's, lo- it's more like a moral reward or something that you're doing because you feel that it's right or is it something that you simply enjoy doing. So it's hard to stay consistent with that. But we got to change that um, mindset. We got to change that mindset with it. For shit, sure. I got ashes on my shirt, guys. I need to hit the blunt. I don't know where the lighter is. My cup. My well is run dry. Let me see if we're still rolling. We're going to do the segments. We're going to wrap this up. Yeah, we're at 28 minutes. Because I ain't trying to be recording forever. Y'all, it's super late. And I got to like edit this episode tonight and put it out in the morning on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. TikTok Radio Public, I think it's called Radio Public, Castbox, Spotify, Apple Music, no, Apple Podcast. Got a lot of work to do, Bucko. But it's worth it. I don't mind it now. I kinda got the hang of it now. It sounds crazy, but I got the hang of it. Um Word of the Day. Word of the day. Hold on, let me put this down because I can't hear this if they got me on tiki talky. But yeah, word of the day is going to be gentlemen. 
Um, and I think that we need to start bringing gentlemen back. And this is speaking specifically for the guys. Y'all need to start back opening the door for the girls. You know, um, you know, just being fucking nice to them, calling them pretty, complimenting them, and not in like a. It doesn't have to be like a pervert ass way. You can literally say like, "Hey, you know, I really like your dress today. I really like your smile today." It doesn't have to be, "Oh, so you looking good? When you gonna let me tap that? When you gonna let me?" No, be a fucking nice guy. Um, if you know that you know she like flowers, you know that she like you know just to ride with you in the car don't leave her when you go to the store uh and you know that you know she just want to ride with you buy her some motherfucking flowers do nice stuff for her hold the door pull her chair out still take her on dates just because y'all go together y'all been together for like a year you feel like you didn't like already worn her over and she ain't going nowhere don't make it a fucking boring relationship. Keep taking her out. Take her to the nice places that she like. Ask her where is a place that's on her bucket list, something that she wants to do. Um, you know what I mean? Just treat the ladies right. Be a whole lot nicer to them because that tough guy act is not going to get y'all anywhere. It's going to make them like rebel against y'all. She's going to go give the nice nigga some pussy. Now you looking stupid. And you think every bitch in the world is just here for money and for sex. And that's just because nigga... You, first of all, probably ain't got no money to offer, and literally all you want is sex. You don't even have, know how to be a fucking nice person, and that's what it starts with. How the fuck you expect this bitch to be in a relationship with you, and for her to take you serious and have a family with you, and you don't even fucking respect her? Be nice to females. Be a gentleman. I don't know, and ladies, if you got one, please don't take advantage of him. You know what I mean? We ain't gonna well in on y'all today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck with y'all next episode. But today is just for, you know, the ain't shit niggas. Or not even like the ain't shit niggas. Because there's a lot of nice guys out there. There are a lot of great guys who know, you know, they do a lot of right things. But they may not be a gentleman per se. And that makes a big difference to a lady. Make her feel special. Make her feel important. Make her feel heard. Um, you know what I mean? Take, you know, like the load off. Always carry the groceries in. If she needs you to hold her purse. If she needs you to fucking, I don't know, chop the onions up. While she got the ground beef and the tacos. She gonna cook the goddamn food. But damn, help her out a little bit. Wash the dishes. Get up and do something. Pick up a broom. Sweep, mop. Put the goddamn something. She ordered some off Amazon that take, you know, a little bit of putting together. Put that shit together for her. Do, you know what I mean? Do Just do the right thing. And y'all know exactly what the fuck I mean when I say that. Just do the right thing. For real, for real. Um, and that's just that. The word of the day is gentlemen. Be one. What's next after that? <laughs> What's next after that is I'm going to do, uh, we'll do kudos. Let me make sure we're still rolling because I would hate to give out on the episode towards the end. Okay. We're going to do kudos, y'all. And this week I'm giving kudos to my girl, Holly Berry. Um, I recently watched uh, Kidnap on Tubi, I believe. Also, shout out to Tubi because Tubi got all the movies. But yeah, I watched uh, Tubi. Kidnap on Tubi with Halle Berry, and I'm going to tell you, she did a fucking amazing. It's kind of similar to The Call in a way, but Halle Berry is such an amazing actress. Even if the movie have like similar plot, she gives you a whole different feel and experience to it. Um, she been doing this shit for God knows how long. That was one of my first crushes. I loved her Storm character. I loved her Catwoman character. Storm was my favorite superhero ever, and honestly, I believe it's because of Halle Berry when I watched her when she played her back in the day. Um... And just well above and beyond that. Holly Berry is just that motherfucking girl. That name. And the culture fucks with her so hard. Her name has been used in God knows how many fucking rap songs. Like, she's really that girl. So, yeah. Shout out to Holly. want to give her flowers while she's here. I love you so, so, so much. And, um, yeah. Keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. And I know that she will. She's like 50-something. And I wish y'all can see how she looked. Look up Halle Berry right now. H A L L E B E R R Y for the ones that don't know her. And I don't even believe that's possible. You can't not know Halle Berry. You kidding me? Everybody knows Halle. So, yeah, shout out to Halle. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is the Taranzuation, um, which is basically just situations. What would you do, you know, if you was in certain situations? <laughs> and. The one that I have right now is, okay, so what would you do if you was giving somebody head, right? So whether you suck a dick or eating pussy, and next thing you know, you going in. They making all the right sounds. They screaming and squirting, and they doing next, you know, doing their motherfucking thing. Next thing you know, you feel a vibration on your chin, and motherfucker go. Shut up!
I'm working here. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause what the fuck? I mean, come on now. Don't. That's kind of sick. Now, you got some people that's into that the whole farting thing. Ugh, I can't get behind that. But no, that's kind of sick. If you fart my motherfucking mouth while I'm um, doing my thing, you can consider that your last dick suck that you will ever listen. <laughs> You ain't never got to worry about that again because you's a trifling motherfucker. And my thing is this. You know, every now and again, you might do a little toot-toot, like a little poot that might come out. because. But that's going to be, it can't be a sinker. You know what I mean? We It can't be a smeller. And you can feel it. I can feel in my stomach if it's going to be a sinker or not. Um, And, you know, at that point, you just kind of go ahead and hold it in. But it can, you know, feel so kind of good. You in the moment, especially for a female, um, I feel like it's a little bit different. Y'all might have more of that feel where it's like, you might just rip one, not even knowing what's going on. Y'all going to kind of keep going, especially two lesbians, because y'all kind of feel, you know, okay, I know that feeling too. It was a little poop. No harm, no foul. But for you to fucking motorboat my goddamn chin with a motherfucking far bitch, now we got a problem. And I ain't gonna get down like that. So I'ma wet my finger. I'ma plug that motherfucker and tell him to shut up while we're working. Only if we go together. If we don't go together and you pull that kind of stunt, baby, that's it for you. You're done. Chop liver. Like we were talking about earlier. But yeah, I don't know. What a world, man. I will end on a con. The streets of Atlanta are. I mean, it's disgusting. I want to. Literally, every time I start talking, they put that raggedy ass pedal to the metal. Um, I want to end on the concept. So what do y'all think about the phrase forever? Like, I be thinking about this all the time when somebody say forever or like, you know, for eternity. Because say, for example, you know, they say you go to like heaven. And you're supposed to be there like forever. Think about how long 100 years is, a million years in dinosaurs existed billions of years ago how the fuck do you exist forever and how is that like i guess happy or sad or any emotion in a way because forever is forever it's for a very fucking long time and you're doing the same thing over and over or is it like multiple lives or how the fuck does it work i don't know i was thinking about that earlier and i was like huh forever But yeah, that's all I got, yo. That's all I got today. I am gonna try to do a um an event in my hometown when I get to like episode twenty. Once things kind of pick up a little bit more, kind of like a live show, my first live show. Um, and I want like local artists or rappers or singers or poets or dancers or strippers. I don't give a fuck, bitch. If you got a talent, come out and show it. Um, and we just all get together, do something cute. Vendors and you know stuff come. And we y'all network, share ideas. But damn it, y'all don't know how to act. That's the only thing. I really want to do something like that, but y'all do not know how to act. And I ain't got time for the bullshit. I got thing what what she say? I gotta get myself together cause I got some place to go. I ain't talking about heaven right now. I'm going there either way, but I'm talking about, you know, to the top. Um, and I ain't got time for, you know, weird shit getting shot over no bullshit. You know what I mean? But I do want to do something, you know, nice. Even though, you know, I know my family got me at the end of the day. <sighs> and everybody, you can't stop, you know, what the next dumb motherfucker might do. So, we'll see. Hopefully it works out. I already got some people, you know, in uh, the midst of wanting to be a part of it. So, super excited for that. If not, Norfolk it is. At the end of the day, they show hella love in Norfolk. So, you know, can never go wrong there. But until next time, y'all, thanks y'all for tuning in. I love y'all.